we inhabit a little blue planet called Earth. Earth is habitable because it had the right conditions and ingredients to enable life as we know it to evolve and flourish. And one of the most important factors in making our blue planet habitable is the wet stuff itself, water. It's kind of extremely important for life. When it comes to the search for habitable exoplanets, planets outside our solar system, we think the ability to have liquid water on a planet's surface is just as important for those worlds. There's a handy concept astronomers use to help them figure out where to look around any given star for exoplanets that just might have the right stuff for life. It's called the habitable zone. It's the distance from a star where a rocky planet with an atmosphere could have liquid water on its surface. In our solar system, the habitable zone extends from around the orbit of Venus to around the orbit of Mars. Earth happens to be nice and comfy in the middle, but it takes more than just a good location. Orbiting in the habitable zone does not guarantee a planet will be habitable. After all, the moon is right here with us, but it's certainly not habitable. Sorry, moon. The location of the habitable zone depends on how big and bright a star is. The nearest star to our sun, Proxima Centauri, has at least one planet in the habitable zone. But because Proxima is much smaller and dimmer than our sun, its habitable zone is way smaller and closer to the star. So every star has a habitable zone, but that doesn't mean there will be planets there. For example, the star known as Kepler 90 is similar to our sun, and it too has eight planets. But they're all huddled super close to the star, well inside of the habitable zone. But the longer we look, the more likely it becomes that one day, we'll find another little blue water-covered planet right in its own comfy habitable zone. And that would be a planet worth a closer look indeed. <laughs>